Good morning. It's always a privilege and a blessing to worship the Lord together with all of you. As we worship the Lord, may I invite you to reflect with me the words of the Lord through David in Psalm 31 verses 23 to 24. Love the Lord, all you His saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. As we worship the Lord this morning, I would like for us to express our wholehearted love for our God because He promised us that He is going to preserve the faithful. In that way, we will gain and regain strength from the Lord and we will have that courage in our heart to face the day and even, uh, even our future. Let's wait on the Lord and let's worship Him together with all our family and friends this morning. Good morning, everyone. It is another brand new day to praise and worship our God. Let us be encouraged. Let us be hopeful. For this morning, we are praising our amazing God who grants us grace and strength for each day. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible I'm not gonna live I'm not gonna live by what I see I'm not gonna live by what I feel Deep down Deep down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I'm not gonna live by what I see. Not gonna live by what I feel Deep down, deep down I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Through you I can do anything I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Yes, Lord, we believe in you and your power. We sing, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you Through you, I can do anything 
God can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I'm living by faith Nothing is impossible I believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you I believe, I believe, I believe in you. Let's give a hot offering to our God. And let's continue to sing of this amazing grace that we get to experience every single moment of our lives. Let's sing together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder And leaves us breathless in awe and wonder The King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life Set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan? A son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of his brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy Oh, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me
Let's continue worshiping our God and declare that He is our ultimate source and provider. He grants us strength for our lives to live for His glory. Let the weak say, I am strong. Faith is rising, mountains fall away. You are always holding on to me. Let the weak say, I am strong. Faith is rising, mountains fall away. You are always holding on to me. You are the strength. You are the strength of my life. You flood the darkness with light. I throw myself on your never-failing love. You are the strength of my heart. I'm riding into your arms. I throw myself on your never-failing love. I will walk in. Not grow faint through the valley, you will make a way. You are always holding on to me, and it's why I sing. You are the strength of my life, you flood the darkness with light. I throw myself on your never-failing love. You are the strength of my heart. I'm running to your arms. I throw myself on your never-failing love. Almighty Savior, you Right. 
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are sealed, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. I said, whoa, 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 there in the ground his body lay of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost his grip on me for I I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Oh, 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 This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand whoa 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 in Christ alone Help us to send, to obey you, to please you as we live our lives. Help us 
to not lose heart, to persevere in our faith, in our walk on this earth until we see you. Good morning, GCF Northwest family. Let us pray. Let's bow our head. Heavenly Father, our great and almighty God, we praise you. You are the God of mercy, our Jehovah Rapha. You are the great provider, O most loving Father. Lord God, we the members of GCF Northwest family, humbly seek your forgiveness as we gather today as one family. Please purify our hearts, cleanse our hearts, O God, through your Son. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for saving us from the penalty of our sins. Thank you for giving us another life. Thank you for your timely provision. Your timing is always perfect. O Holy Spirit, please continue to guide us, your children. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for always rebuking us whenever we commit mistakes. Please continue to align our thoughts with God's will. Lord, please teach us to fix our eyes on you alone. Please open our eyes that we may see the goodness of others because of you. Lord God, our ultimate healer, we thank you for healing our brethren and for your un unending provision. Please teach us not to forget your good deeds in the past and that we should never doubt your faithfulness. Lord God, we continue to pray for Sunday school ministry that there will be more teachers, volunteers to teach our children. Touch the heart of those who are capable to teach and those who love children. Encourage them to use their gifts. We also pray for those who are actively involved in member care. Please continue to ignite their passion to serve so that your name shall be glorified. We also pray for our leaders, our growth group leaders, and soon-to-be leaders of this church. Please guide them as you usually do. Please protect them from the attacks of the enemy in any form. We also pray, Lord, for Pastor Nicola Padilla, who will be your mouthpiece today. Please guide him as he delivers your message. Lastly, Lord, please teach each and every one of us to fix our eyes on eternal things alone. This we pray in the most powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. From the English Standard Version, let's read together. Treasure in jars of clay. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. 
We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but that are not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying the body of death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh, so that is at work in us, but life is in me. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For is it all for the sake, so that the grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart through the outer self, is wasting away our inner self, is being renewed day by day. For the light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7-18 to 18. May God bless the reading of His Word. Good morning! Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to God's Word, brought to us by our guest speaker, Pastor Nicolo Padilla. Do not lose heart. From 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 18. A blessed and joyful Sunday to our GCF Northwest family. Good morning po sa inyo lahat. Ako po si Pastor Nicolo. And I just want to begin by saying that I am thankful and I praise God for this privilege to uh, once again be able to deliver God's message to you all. I just want to thank Pastor Jerry and again the rest of the leadership team of GCF Northwest for extending this invitation uh, for me to be able to deliver God's God's message. Uh, our passage for this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 18. And the title of our message is, is Do Not Lose Heart. Now, this, this portion in 2 Corinthians um, has to be one of my, my favorite portions in, in all of Scripture. I deeply, deeply appreciate this portion in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, uh, primarily because I believe that... Um, that this is so relevant, especially at, at, at such a time as this, na napakaraming bagay po ang pwedeng maging dahilan upang tayo po ay mapanghinaan ng loob sa lahat po na nangyayari sa ating bansa, sa mundo, sa ating mga personal na mga buhay. But there are so many reasons for for us to um, to lose heart. And so I pray that at the end of our time today, I pray that as we listen to the words of the Apostle Paul as we study, as we, as we reflect on, on the words of Scripture. I pray that at the end of our time that we would have, by the grace of God, by the mercy of our Lord, that we would have that resolve to say that we, we will not lose heart. And so before we begin, why don't we open our time in a brief word of, of prayer. Lord, again, I just thank you for this privilege that you've given me to join my dear brothers and sisters from GCF Northwest, Lord, we thank you again for the gift of technology, that we can still be together, that we can still be united uh, despite being in separate places. Lord, I pray that as we open your word, as we uh, take a closer look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 18, Lord, I pray that your word would minister to us. I pray that your word would speak to us. Lord, again, we believe and we know that your word is true, that your word is alive, that you speak to us through scripture. So God, I pray that more than anything, that you would give us eyes that see and ears that hear. And I pray, Lord, that as we study, as we listen, as we reflect on your word, Lord, may we exalt the glorious name of Jesus in his name alone. Amen and amen and amen. So again, a blessed and a joyful, joyful morning to, to everyone. Now, again, as I mentioned, our passage from this morning is taken from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses uh, 7 to 18. Now, although we're looking at a bigger, this big chunk, this big portion in this chapter, our our, our anchor verse, our main focus is actually on verse, uh, verse 16. Um, let me read 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Here it says, so we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. And so this is actually where we got the title of our message. When Paul says in verse 16, again here he says, So we do not lose heart. 
But before we dive into our passage, it's helpful to understand, just have a brief context, just to have a brief background of, of 2 Corinthians. Now, obviously, um, again, Paul is the author of this letter. This is his letter to the believers, to the church at, at Corinth. Now, 2 Corinthians is a little bit different from 1 Corinthians. When Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, uh, napakadami pong mga division yung nangyayari amongst believers sa 1 Corinthians. And so, one of the primary reasons, one of the primary concerns that Paul addressed was uh, the concern about this divisiveness. Again, there's nagkahagulo po sila, watak-watak po yung mga believers sa Corinth. And so, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, he was exhorting the believers at Corinth for them to be united in in Christ. Now, when Paul wrote 2 Corinthians, the concerns were a little bit different. When Paul wrote uh, 2 Corinthians, there was uh, false teachers have crept into the church. And because these these false teachers have crept into the church, they were also spreading kaya po sila false teachers kasi meron po silang uh, maling katuruan na uh, pinapalaganap. They, right? They're spreading a, a false teaching, a false gospel. And so one of the things that we can say about 2 Corinthians is that Paul wrote this as a defense to the gospel, that he is establishing, he's defending the very essence of, of the gospel. But if we take a closer look at 2 Corinthians, not only here we will see that not only is Paul defending the gospel, here we will see that Paul is also defending um, his authority as an apostle. Paul is defending his, his, uh, his apostleship. Kung titignan na po natin yung 2 Corinthians, here we will see that these false teachers, and Paul refers to them as super apostles. Uh, hindi lang sila basta nag, so they're, they're spreading a false gospel, they're spreading a false message. Pero hindi lang po yun. They are also questioning the very apostleship, the very authority of the Apostle Paul. And so again, here we can also say that Paul wrote Second Corinthians as a defense to the gospel and as a defense to his apostleship. Because Paul knows that if the believers at Corinth are led away from him, that they will eventually will also be led away from the very essence of, of the gospel. Now, ito po mga false teachers, ito po mga super apostles na to, uh, yung isang, yung mga bagay po na yung pinanguhugutan nila, yung pinanggagalingan po nila, let me read uh, 2 Corinthians 10.10. Again, these, these false teachers are questioning Paul. They're questioning his authority. They're questioning his, his apostleship. And isa sa mga very specific na question po nila, uh, let me read 2 Corinthians 10.10. 10. Here it says, For they say, they here are the false teachers, they say his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech of no account. So these false teachers, these super apostles, they're saying that Paul, they acknowledge Paul's, uh, yung, yung, yung gifting ni Paul, yung ability ni Paul na magsulat. Sabi niya, his letters are weighty and strong. He said, they're basically saying that when Paul writes, there's authority, there's weight, may, may bigat, may, may authority yung mga sulat ni, ni Pablo. And yet, they say in the second half of verse 10, he says, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech of no account. Paul is saying that, or these super apostles, these false teachers are saying, yes, Paul, when he writes, there's authority, there's weight to his letters. But if you look at his physical appearance, these false teachers are saying, his physical appearance, he appears to be so weak. And not only does he appear to be weak, he said they say that his speech is of no account, that when he speaks, there's no authority. When he speaks, parang masyadong, again, they, they were basically the super apostles, they were looking at the physical appearance of the apostle Paul, and they were basically saying, is that, is that really, is that your apostle? Someone who appears to be so weak, someone who sounds so weak, is that your apostle? So that's one of the things that they were looking at. They were questioning Paul based on his, his physical appearance, based on his, his seeming weakness. But see, not only were they questioning Paul based on his physical appearance, they were also questioning Paul based on his, his life, his journey. Now, if you've read the book of Acts, I know that he in the book of Acts, it's so clear that Paul... Paul's journey was far from easy. It was far from perfect. Napakadaming pagsubok po na pinagdaanan ni, ni Pablo. And they were basically questioning Paul based on that. They were questioning Paul and saying, Hey, is, is that your apostle? Bakit napakahirap nung kanyang, bakit napakadami niyang pagsubok na, na pinagdaanan? Let me read the first 
chapter, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Here, this is Paul speaking, again, to the believers at Corinth. Here he says, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Paul, in the first chapter, in the beginning portion of his letter, tells the, the believers at Corinth, Hey, I, I don't want you to be ignorant of the affliction, of the hardships that we faced, that we experienced in Asia, Paul says that they were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that they despaired of life itself. Paul is saying that we experienced so much hardship. And again, these super apostles were using them against the apostle Paul. They were basically saying, hey, is is he really preaching? You're going to listen to his message? Then why is his life so hard? Why is his life filled with so many challenges and so many difficulties? If he really is an apostle of God, of Jesus, of the Messiah, you know, why does he appear to be so weak? Why is ganyan talaga yung itsura ng, ng apostol niyo? And so again, these super apostles were questioning Paul. Now, I'd like for us to have this framework as we approach 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 18. I'd like for us to have this, this context in mind because I believe that this will help us better understand and better appreciate, again, Paul's letter to the church at, at Corinth. And again, as I mentioned earlier, sa dami nang pwedeng maging dahilan po para sa atin ngayon na mapanghinaan po tayo ng loob. Yung prayer ko po, my prayer is that as we go through the Word of God, as we go through this portion in 2 Corinthians, I pray that we would have this resolve that we too, in the same way that the Apostle Paul was able to say this, I pray that we would be able to say, I will not, by the grace of God, I will not, I will not lose heart. So let's go back to our passage, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Again, here Paul says, so we do not lose heart. So we do not lose heart. Now, I'm not sure if, if there are some of you, I'm sure there are some of you who have taken uh, BSM or Bible study methods. In Bible study methods, um, there's a very crucial word in verse 16 that uh, seems, kung titignan na natin, parang walang, walang meaning, wala siyang, kung i-isolate natin yung word na ito, parang napaka-insignificant niya. But I'd like for us to pay attention to the first word in chapter 4, verse 16. It's the word so. In the ESV, it's so. I think in the NIV, it says there for. And this word is so crucial. Here Paul says, so, or again, I think in the NIV it says, therefore, therefore, we do not lose heart. Now this word is so crucial because it connects us to the previous verses. Now if you look at verse 7, from verse 7 onwards, here you will see that the Apostle Paul lays out his reasons. He gives us his reasons as to why and as to how he is able to say, I do not lose heart. Nagbigay po ng dahilan si Pablo kung paano niya nasabi, kung paano po siya umabot sa gantong punto na nasabi niya, therefore, ito yung mga dahilan. At dahil dito, sabi ni Paul, this is why, therefore, I do not lose heart. And if we will look, take a closer look at our passage, not only, para naka-sandwich po itong verse 16. Because the verses before and the verses after gives us, dito nilatag ni Paul yung, again, yung mga dahilan po niya, kung paano niya nasabi na hindi po siya and that's what we're going to do today as we spend some time in the Word, as we take a closer look at chapter 4. That's what we're going to do. I'd like for us to look at the reasons that Paul gives us as to why, as to how he is able to say, I do not lose heart. And I pray na tayo rin po, again, by the grace and mercy of our good Lord, na masasabi rin po natin na hindi tayo mapanghihinaan ng, ng loob. And so let's begin in verse, I hope you have your Bibles with you, in verse 7. Here in verse 7, let me read uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. Paul says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to, to us. Now here in verse 7, Paul gives us two images, uh, two pictures that we have to understand. I'd like for us to focus and to highlight uh, on the word treasure, that was you phrased in jars of clay. Now these are the two images that Paul gives us in verse 7. And in order to understand verse 7, we have to understand what does Paul mean by this? What does he mean by treasure? And what does he mean by jars that are made up of, of clay? Now, in so verse 16, there is a crucial in the word. It was so and therefore. In verse 7, there's also a crucial word 
the verse 7 begins with the word but. No, but also connects us to the previous verses and actually even the previous chapter. Now, for the sake of time, we're not going to go through Second Corinthians chapter 3 or even the first portion of chapter 4. But again, this word but connects us to the previous, to the earlier verses and to the previous chapter. Now, to understand, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ni Paul dito sa treasure? If we take a look at chapter 3 and even the beginning part of chapter 4, here it's it's quite clear that when Paul mentions treasure in, in, in chapter 4, verse 7, the treasure here refers to the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a gospel that takes the veil, removes the veil from our eyes. It's a gospel that allows us to behold the glory of the Lord. It's a gospel that transforms us from one degree of glory to another. It's a gospel that shines brightly in the midst of darkness. This is the treasure that Paul has mentioned here in, in verse 7. It's the gospel of Jesus. And Paul says that this gospel, this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, he says it's placed in jars of clay. Now we have to ask the question out of this many images that Paul could have used. Why did he use jars made up of, of clay? Now I'm not sure if you have access to I'm sure you have access to Google. Um, I'd like for you to just, if you don't have access to Google right now, it's okay. But I'd like for you to have a mental picture of, of jars made up of, of clay. Now, jars made up of clay during the time of the Apostle Paul, they're very common and they're found in, in most household. Now, there was a, a, a biblical, com- biblical commentary who, who mentioned that jars of clay during the time of the Apostle Paul can be compared to plastic containers that we have today. Now, these plastic containers, again, uh, common, yeah? it's found in most everybody's household. Right now, itong jars of clay sa panahon po ni Pablo, yung gamit po, na, yung gamit po sa kanila ay pang store po ng liquid. At kung kailangan nyo po mag-transport ng liquid, dito raw po siya nilalagay sa mga, sa mga jars of clay. Now, these jars of clay, again, being compared to plastic containers, hindi ko po alam kung Meron po sa inyo dito na uh, ang, ang responsibility niyo po ay ang tagahugas ng pinggan. Pengi pong thumbs up kung ang responsibility niyo po sa bahay ay tagahugas po kayo ng pinggan. Ako kasi po, yun ang isa sa mga primary responsibilities ko po. Ako ang <laughs> tagahugas ng pinggan sa amin. At nung pandemic, I'm sure you all would agree, dumami po yung mga plastic containers natin. Why? Kaka-order po sa sa grab, sa food panda, kaka-take out, kaka-deliver. Mostly ng mga pagkain po, nakalagay sa sa plastic container. Now, yung asawa ko po, si Neze, napakahilig po niya mangolekta ng mga plastic container sa to. Kasi nga daw po, magagamit, magagamit pa po siya. Again, to store food, to store, you know, to store whatever. Now, for those of you who do the dishes at your own homes, you know, uh, of the challenge. Alam niyo po yung challenge sa mga plastic containers to. Especially po kung masebo yung ulam, di po ba? At nanikit na dun sa mga sulok-sulok nung, nung plastic container na to. Napakahira po niyang uskusin. Kaya yung wife ko po, si Nezel, gulat na gulat po siya dahil sabi niya, ang dami nating plastic container pero bakit walang natitira? Kasi kapag hindi po siya nakatingin, ang ginagawa ko po, tinataapong ko na po yun kesa Besides, instead of spending so much time and trying to get all the all the oil and all the grease out, tinatapong ko na po siya. Right? These, these jars of clay are like that. They're replaceable. They're not worth that much. And again, they're found in most of everybody's, everybody's household. And not only are these jars of clay replaceable, not only are they cheap, not only are they very common, try to imagine what, what do you think would happen if, if you tip over these jars of clay a few inches off the ground? Right? I want you to have a mental picture of a jar made up of clay and that it's a few inches off the ground. Just imagine you po na natumba siya. What do you think will happen to these jars of clay? Most likely, they're going to crack. Most likely, they're going to break. So this tells us that these jars of clay are not only cheap, they're replaceable, they're very common. Not only that, this also tells us that these jars of clay are fragile. That these jars of clay break easily. And so going back to our passage in, in, chapters, in, in uh, chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says that this treasure, this glorious 
treasure, this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that unveils our eyes, that allows us to behold the glory of God. The gospel of Jesus is placed in a jar of clay, is placed in someone like you and me, someone who's weak, someone who's replaceable, someone who's fragile, someone who's very common, someone who's not, very, who's not worth that much. And I'd like for us to go back to the context of 2 Corinthians. Super apostles, these false teachings, teachers are questioning the apostleship of Paul. And their basis is Paul's weakness. Paul said, they were looking at Paul and saying, Hey, why is he so weak? Why does he appear to be so weak? And I love how Paul is defending himself. See, Paul is not denying his weakness. Paul is not defending. He's not justifying. He's not trying to explain his weakness. But Paul is saying, yes, actually, indeed, I am weak. I'm like a jar of clay. But this is the wisdom and majesty of God that he chose to play something so glorious, something so wonderful in someone like me. Someone who's like a jar of clay, who's weak, who's fragile, who's easily replaceable. Why? For what purpose? In verse 7, to show, this is wonderful, to show that the surpassing power belongs not to Paul, but to God and to God alone. I love how John Piper puts it in his book, God is the Gospel. Um, the context of, of John Piper in his book is ordinariness, but I I. And I, I believe it, it's applicable for the word weakness for our context today. Here's, here's what John Piper had to say. Your ordinariness or your weakness is not a liability. It's an asset if you really want God to get the glory. Let me repeat the words of Pastor John Piper. He says that your ordinariness or your weakness is not, it is not a liability. It's an asset if you really want God to get the glory. The first reason, my brothers and sisters, why we do not lose heart and why Paul was able to say, I do not lose heart, is this. We do not lose heart because our weakness displays the power of God. According to his wisdom, his majesty, the Lord has chosen to play something so glorious. Someone like us, someone who's weak, who's replaceable, who's very common. There's nothing special about us. But the Lord did this. Why? For what purpose? To show that the surpassing power belongs to him and not to us. Number one, we do not lose heart because our weakness displays the power of God. But now at this point, I'd like for us to ask, how does this, how does this actually happen? What does this actually look like? It sounds noble. It's Nice to hear in our ears, right? That our weakness displays the power of God. But how does that actually work? How does that actually look like? The power of God being displayed in our weakness. See, when we think about the power of God, we think about right, the parting of the Red Sea. Or we think about Yahweh, Joshua conquering the nations. We think about Yahweh defeating the nations. Right? We think about these mighty and glorious acts of the Lord. And it's true, the power of God is displayed in those moments. But see, I appreciate our text because Paul doesn't merely stop in, in verse 7. And he, he, I believe in the next two verses, he gives us a clear picture of how the power of God is displayed in our, in our weakness. So let's read verse 8 and 9. Here Paul says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Now here in, in these two verses, I'd like for us to focus on these four things that Paul mentions. He says that he is afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down. Now as we look at verse 8 and 9 again, I, we're trying to figure out how is, the, how is the power of God displayed in our in our weakness. And to help us understand this, I believe it's helpful to focus on these four things. Again, Paul says that he's afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, and struck down. Let's begin with afflicted. Paul says that we are afflicted in every way. Now, the word, the Greek word that Paul used for afflicted, um, it's, it's a picture of someone being pinned against the wall. It's a picture of someone who is carrying so much weight at and, and dahil sa sobrang bigat po ng weight na nakadagan sa kanya, parang napipisa na po siya. Right? It's a picture of someone 
who's carrying so much weight that he's having a hard time breathing because of the weight that's being pressed upon him. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that there's affliction everywhere. And there's so much weight being pressed, being pressed upon me. Now, I'm not sure if, if some of you have experienced affliction. I'm not sure if some of you, I'm sure, actually, I'm sure, meron po sa inyo na experience niya ng patong-patong yung problema. Sunod-sunod, patong-patong, parang walang katapusan yung problema. At dahil po dito yung feeling natin na, hindi na akong makahinga. Lord, hindi na akong makahinga sa bigat, sa dami ng nakatagan sa atin. Have you experienced Has any of you experienced that situation? Here, Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying, we've experienced affliction in every way. Again, the picture is someone being pinned against the wall. Someone who's having a hard time breathing. And Paul doesn't stop there. He says that because of so much affliction, Paul says that he is he's gotten to that point of being perplexed. Now, to be perplexed is to be in a state of lostness. To be in a state of of not being able to understand why things are happening the way they are. Yung pagiging perplex po, yung, yung picture po dito na hindi mo na ma-process yung mga nangyayari. Sa sobrang bigat, sa sobrang dami, hindi ka na makapag-isip ng diretso, hindi ka na makapag-isip ng tama. And this is what Paul is saying, we are afflicted in every way. And Paul says that he is, because of so much affliction, he has reached this point of being perplexed. That he has a, such a difficult time trying to process, that he's having a hard time thinking straight because of the pressure, because of the weight being pressed upon him. Now, I'd like for us to take note, my brothers and sisters, that this is the Apostle Paul speaking. Kung meron mang super apostle, dapat si Paul yun. And yet even Paul himself, here he's saying, I've reached that point where I, it's, it's so hard for me to think straight. Na hindi niya ma-process yung mga bagay na nangyayari. And again, Paul continues further. He says that he is persecuted. Now again, going back to the, to the book of Acts, if, if you've read the journey of the Apostle Paul, if you've looked at his journey, here you would see that Paul went through so much persecution. Right? From kung saan man siya magpunta. Right? People, these, the religious leaders were following Paul and they were persecuting the Apostle Paul. Kahit saan siya magpunta, punta, sinusundan po siya ng, ng persecution. And Paul says, again, at the end of this, in, in verse 9, he says that he is struck down. Sa dami ng persecution, because of the affliction, because of being perplexed, because of, again, sa dami po ng persecution, Paul has been struck down. Nadatapa, o nadapa na si, si Pablo. And so again, the question that we're trying to answer, we're trying to understand is, How is the power of God displayed in these moments? In moments of affliction, in moments of perplexity, in moments of persecution, in moments of being struck down. How is the gospel, how is the power of God displayed during these times? And I'd like for us, again, I hope that you have your Bibles open. I'd like for us to pay attention to, an, to a phrase that is found in every nakaduktong ng mga words na binasa po natin. Let me read again verses 8-9. We are afflicted in every way. Ano po yung kasunod dun? What's the phrase after that? But not crushed. Perplexed. What's after that? In the ESV it says perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. My brothers and sisters, the beautiful and glorious thing about the power of God being displayed in our weakness, it's this. It's in Paul's ability, in our ability to keep moving forward, despite the affliction, despite the per being perplexed, despite being persecuted, despite being struck down. The power of God is displayed in our ability, in Paul's ability to keep moving forward. He says there's so much pressure upon him there's so much weight being pressed upon him and yet paul says he's not crushed and paul's ability to not be crushed is a display of, not of his strength not of his wisdom not of his might but of the power of god kasi kung si paul lang yun malamang napisa na siya 
He says he's perplexed. Nina niya maisip, nina niya process, but he is not driven to despair. He is not driven to ultimate hopelessness. He is persecuted, but he knows that he's not absolutely forsaken. He is struck down, and he knows that Paul is not destroyed. The second thing I'd like for us to take note, my brothers and sisters, is that we do not lose heart because God's power assures our perseverance. We do not lose heart because if the power of God is truly in us, there is this assurance that we will keep moving forward. I love how William Barclay puts it in um, his commentary, The Letters to the Corinthians. This is what William Barclay says. He says that the supreme characteristic of the Christian is not that he does not fall, but that every time he falls, he rises again. It is not that he is never beaten, but he is never ultimately defeated. He may lose a battle, but he knows that in the end, he can never lose the campaign. I love the first part. Let me repeat the first part. This is what he says. The supreme characteristic of the Christian is not that he does not fall, because the reality is affliction will come. The reality is we will reach that point of being perplexed. The reality is persecution will come. The reality is times of stumbling will come. The supreme characteristic of the Christian is not that he does not fall, but that every time he falls, he rises uh, again. We do not lose heart because God's power assures our perseverance. And the first thing that we mentioned, we do not lose heart. Because our weakness displays the power of God. What a glorious gospel that we have, my brothers and sisters. So for those of you who are facing affliction, for those of you who are in that state of perplexity where you're perplexed, for those of you who are being persecuted, for those of you who are who feel that you have stumbled, that you have fallen, that you've, you were struck down, I pray that the word of God would minister to you. I pray that we would be reminded that the power of God in display is displayed in our weakness. How? In, it's displayed in our ability to get back up and to keep moving, to keep moving forward. Now, let me read the next portion. Let me read from verse 10 onwards. From verse 10 to verse 15. Here it says, Always carrying in the death, in the body, the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Now, for the sake of time, we, we don't have time to actually look and expound these verses. But let me, I'd just like for us to focus on verse 12 and verse 15. The first part of verse 12 and the first part of verse 15. Verse 12 here, it says, So death is at work in us, Paul says, but life in you. Death is at work in us. Pay attention to the words of the Apostle Paul. Again, he's giving, he's not done giving his reasons as to why, as to how he's able to say that he's not losing heart. So pay attention to the words of Paul in verse 12. He says, so death is at work in us. Paul says, but life in you. Verse 15, for it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Verse 15, for it is all for your sake sake death is at work in us but life in you and in verse 15 he says for it is all for your sake pay attention to the words of the apostle paul that's some point in focus in paul but is paul thinking about himself in the midst of the challenges the affliction the perplexity the persecution him being struck down where is paul's focus based from verse 12 and verse 15 see paul is thinking about the believers at corinth Paul is saying death is at work in us. When Paul says death, he's referring to death figuratively, right? Because of all the, the suffering and the persecution, the challenges that they had to go through. Paul is saying death is at work in us. But Paul is saying this death that we experience figuratively, this is, this is for you. This is for your sake. 
And so here we see the focus of the Apostle Paul. Paul's heart is focused towards the believers at Corinth. Paul says in verse 15, this is for your sake so that grace would extend to more and more people. We do this for your sake because we know that grace is extending to more and more people. And if grace is extending to more and more people, this is resulting in thanksgiving, that this is resulting in an increase in thanksgiving. And because of this, glory is lifted to God. And Paul says that this is one of the reasons why we do not lose. We do not lose heart. So the third thing I'd like for us to take note, my brothers and sisters, is that we do not lose heart because our suffering produces thanksgiving in others and glory is lifted to God. Paul was focused on the grace of God extending to more and more people, which ex- which means that thanksgiving increases, which means glory is being lifted to God. For the sake of others, Paul is not losing heart. And I leave this to you, my brothers and sisters at GCF Northwest. I pray that you would have the same resolve as the Apostle Paul, that we would have the same resolve as the Apostle Paul, that we would say that for the sake of the people that the Lord has entrusted to us, for the sake of the unreached people groups, for the sake of our communities, for the sake of the unbelievers in our neighborhoods, in our workplace, in our families, that for the sake of our marriages, that for the sake of our children, that for the sake of the youth, for the sake of the next generation, for the sake of the people who desperately need to hear the gospel, for the sake of the grace of God extending to more and more people. GCF Northwest, I pray that you would not lose heart. I pray that we would not lose heart. So going back to verse 16, Paul says, so we do not lose heart. And again, from verses 7 to up until this point, Paul has given us specific reasons as to why, as to how he does not lose heart. But again, just to say it again, Paul does not stop there. Paul continues further. He says in verse 16, Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. And he expounds further in the following verses. Verse 17, he says, For this light, And momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Again, that word for is crucial. Paul is continuing. He's giving us more, again, more reasons as to why, as to how he's not able to lose heart. And in verse 17, I'd like for us to focus on those two words, light and momentary. Paul says that the afflictions that he's been experiencing, that they've been experiencing, is light Magaang and momentary. Panandalian lamang yung sinasabi ni Paul. Yung mga afflictions, yung mga pagsubok, yung mga suffering. Sabi ni Paul, magaang lang to at panandalian lamang ito. Now, I'd like for us to have a, a, a better picture of what Paul had to go through. And I'd like for us to have a better understanding of what Paul considers light and what Paul considers momentary. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, Let's begin with uh, verse 23. Chapter 11, verse 23. Here Paul says, again, in in referring to the super apostles, Are they servants of Christ? I'm a better one. I'm talking like a madman with far greater labors. Pay attention to what Paul had to go through. And this is what Paul considers light and momentary. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews, the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and in hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, And apart from other things, there's a daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Did you listen? Did you hear the words of the Apostle Paul? Paul says that he considers these things as light and momentary. What? (laughs) Paano? Paano po nasabi ni Paul na itong mga bagay na ito, 40 lashes less one, he was stoned, he was beaten with rods, he was shipwrecked a night and 
a day, he says he was adrift at sea. Paul says that these things are light and these things are momentary. I believe that the Apostle Paul was able to see and understand and to embrace the truth that these things are light and momentary because Paul's focus, Paul was looking at the glory that awaits. For Paul, in light of the glory of eternity, in light of the glory that awaits, Paul says that these things are light and momentary. I'd like for us to take a few moments and think about this. See, Paul's eschatology, Paul's understanding of the end times, Paul's understanding of the end of the age is not merely theological, is not merely doctrinal. Here we see that Paul's perspective of the end of the age, of the glory that awaits when Jesus Christ returns in the fullness of his glory. This is not merely a theological concept for the Apostle Paul. Here we see that this is affecting how Paul lives in the here and in the now. Because Paul is forward looking to that glorious, wonderful, majestic day when Jesus returns. Paul says, in light of that glory that awaits, these things are light and these things are momentary. The next thing I'd like for us to take note, my brothers and sisters, is that we do not lose heart because these afflictions are light and these afflictions are momentary compared to the glory that awaits. Do we long for that day? As we look at what's happening in the world around us, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the chaos globally, as we look at the chaos that's happening in our very nation, one thing is sure and one thing is certain that we are moving closer and closer to that glorious day when our Lord Jesus comes from the clouds of heaven. We are moving closer and closer toward that glorious day. Are we longing for that day? Are we thirsting for that day? For Paul, here we see that, again, it's not just a theological concept. It's not just a future concept for Paul. In light of that day, Paul says, whatever I'm going through now is light. Whatever I, I'm going through now is momentary. Paul, again, doesn't stop there. Let me, let's read all the way until verse 18. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The last thing that I'd like for us to take note, my brothers and sisters, is that we do not lose heart because these afflictions are preparing us for an eternal weight of glory. Not only does Paul consider these things light and momentary, Paul says that these sufferings, these hardships, these persecutions, these afflictions, this is actually working for me. This is preparing me, preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Do we long for that day, that glorious day, my brothers and sisters, when we will behold the fullness of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are being made ready for that day. And so in light of that, I pray that we would not lose heart. I don't know what it is that you're going through, GCF, Northwest. I don't know the struggles of the challenges that you're going through. But I pray that the Word of God will continue to minister to you. I pray that we would be reminded that according to the wisdom of our God, that He has placed something so glorious, so wonderful, that he has placed this treasure, the gospel of Jesus, in jars of clay. And someone like you and me, someone who's weak, someone who's fragile, someone who's easily broken, someone who's very common, very replaceable. And this was according to the Lord's wisdom. Why? To show that the surpassing power belongs to him and not to us. And so if you are here, if you're listening to this message and you're struggling with your own feelings that you feel that you're like a jar of clay i pray that the word of god would remind you of this glorious truth i pray that you would not lose heart why because god's power is displayed in our weakness and today i pray that we would also be reminded that the power of god assures our perseverance i pray that we'd be reminded that yes afflictions will come Yes, we will reach that point of being perplexed. Yes, we there will be persecution. Yes, 
we might we will get struck down but i pray that we would be reminded of this glorious truth that the power of god assures us that we will keep moving forward so i pray that you would not lose heart and gcf northwest i pray that for the sake of others that you would continue to persevere for the sake of your church for the sake of your communities for the sake of the families for the sake of the youth for the sake of the marriages for the sake of the unreached people groups i pray that you would not lose heart and i pray that in light of eternity i pray that we would be reminded that whatever it is that we go through now are light and momentary and that these things are actually preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison so i pray gcf northwest that you would not lose heart that we would not lose heart but yes we stumble and we fall but i pray that every time that we do we would rise up again and that we would keep moving forward all the way until that glorious day let's join our hearts in a word of, of prayer lord we just thank you so much for your word for us this day we thank you lord for second corinthians is a gift to us the whole bible lord is a gift to us lord we thank you for uh, the life of the apostle paul thank you lord for the result that he has that he will not lose heart or in light of the things that we mentioned today so i lord i pray that the same would be true for us i pray lord that you would just allow us to experience your power at work in us i pray lord that in the midst of, of our own seasons of affliction our own seasons of of, of challenges, Lord, I pray that during these moments and during these times that we would all the more experience your power in enabling us and empowering us to keep moving forward. And Lord, I pray that you would give us this hunger and give us this thirst for that glorious day when we see you face to face. Because Lord, in light of that day, whatever it is that we go through now, Lord, as the Apostle Paul has mentioned, is light and momentary. And help us to embrace the truth Oh God, that you are preparing us, that you are making us ready for that glorious day as a beautiful bride has, as a beautiful bride has made herself ready for her groom. Lord, we long for you. We long for that glorious day. Lord, I thank you. I pray for GCF Northwest. Lord, I continue to pray for them. May you continue to lead uh, Pastor Jerry and the rest of the leadership team. Lord, we believe and we know that this is your church, that you established GCF Northwest, and that you will continue to sustain them, that you will continue to bless them, that you will continue to lead them. Lord, I thank you so much for this time. I pray that you would continue to go before us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A blessed day to everyone. God bless Pope. God bless. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing that. Stood on the stage, night after night, reminding the broken it will be alright. But right now, Oh, right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone They say it only takes a little faith To move the mountain What good thing A little faith is all God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, 
give me the strength to be able to sing it is well with my soul i know you're able and i know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but Just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. You've been faithful, you've been good all my days. Jesus, I will cling to you. Come one day, cause I know. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. But even